man, it's freaking hot out here. Look, I love making these videos for you guys. I kind of make them for myself more than anything else. And if you can believe it, my channel just passed 50,000 views, which is amazing for me. But only like 0.001% of those came from subscribers. So do me a huge favor, click that subscribe button. That can help me make some more of these videos and maybe you can see me sweat through another t-shirt. Thanks. Almost the middle of July, it is super hot outside. We all survived the fireworks on 4th of July, and now we're dead in the middle of camping season. Today on Don't Burn the House Down, I wanna show you some of the answers to the questions that I get all the time when I'm taking the RV out camping. You see, one thing I hate when it comes to living in an RV for a while is the way that it rocks back and forth whenever somebody moves inside of there. You know, I, I get seasick, I get a little motion sick, and if the kids are running around and I'm trying to lay in the bed or the dog's jumping around, I'm trying to lay in the bed, when that camper rocks side to side, I can't sleep. So I've done a couple of things I'm gonna share with you today and I'm gonna answer some of the questions that I get all the time when we're out camping, when people see my setup. So that's what I'm gonna share today, how to keep that house from rocking and don't burn the house down. Most travel trailers and some fifth wheels rely on these to stabilize your camper once it is parked. These are scissor jacks. Scissor jacks are, are fine, and the way that they work is you you put your, uh, your jack extender in there, your little crowbar, you crank that thing down, it touches the ground. You have one jack on each corner of the camper, both two on the back, two on the front. The problem is those scissor jacks have one point of contact with the ground. And even when they are fully extended, if you rock this trailer just a little bit, it moves and it moves and it moves. So for the sake of today's experiment, we've got a water bottle right here with some colored dye in it. And I'm gonna rock this trailer back and forth a few times just to kind of show you how hard this thing rocks uh, with just the scissor jacks, no jacks, and then with the stabilizing methods that I have in place. So let's get the tripod set up. The water bottle is set up. Now imagine that you're laying in the back bedroom, the kids are coming in out of the camper, the dog's jumping up and jumping around. This is how hard this camper will rock with no stabilization. I don't know about you, but that's getting me pretty sick. Experiment number two, I have dropped down the scissor jacks with no other stabilization, and let's see how well this thing will actually keep me from rocking. That is still a significant amount of vomit coming out of me every time my 90 pound German Shepherd decides he wants to jump off the couch and onto the floor. Not gonna do it for me. So, let's see what we do about it. When I got my first travel trailer several years ago, it was a 20 footer and I hated the rocking motion. So my, I made an investment in these. These are called JT Strong Arms. The way that JT Strong Arms work is they are kind of like expandable tubes that connect to the frame. And then the other end of it connects to the bottom of your scissor jack. The way that this works is when you have your jack fully extended, you tighten up this tube, and that prevents any left to right motion of this scissor jack. When you order this kit, it comes with six of these. And the way that you perfectly want to install it in a perfect world is you would have your two back ones going left to right. You'd have two on your front scissor jacks going left to right. And then you would also have uh, two of them going front to back. That could be one on this corner and then one on that corner. You're trying to prevent lateral sway as well as, well as um, front to back sway. Now, when I bought this kit, I bought it used and it, it was missing some of the components, which I figured it might be. So I only ended up with five of these tubes. But this was the first step in keeping the sway down. I will show you how it works when I fully extend my scissor jack here. 
first things first, before we have anything deployed on here, we wanna get the tongue jack uh, to push this thing up almost to perfectly level. So we're gonna bring the tongue jack up a little bit. Now that we have the trailer pretty close to being level with just the tongue jack, we're actually going to jack it back down, and I usually go to about the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. What this does is it brings the rear end of the trailer up just a tiny, tiny bit. And that's gonna be crucial for when we extend the strong arms. So I'm gonna show you how we do that now. Starting in the back, I'm going to loosen these T-nuts right here. And clear over here. Then we put the jacks down. I use these little homemade blocks. You can use whatever you want. If this thing is close to the ground, you can put the jack stand right on the ground, maybe with just one pad underneath it. But I would always, always suggest that you never put the jack stand directly on the ground. If that thing sinks into the dirt or sinks into the grass, you're gonna pretty much negate all of the anti-sway that you're working on here. So make sure you have something solid between the bottom of that jack and the ground. So now I'm gonna jack this side down and watch how that tube extends as I'm putting it down. Just get it snug and then go to the other side. Same thing on the other side here. Okay, now that we have both sides snug on the ground, we are going to reach in there and tighten up those T-nuts over here. And you want to get it really snug. And then over here as well. Hopefully you can still see that. Now what we've done is we have locked these scissor jacks in place. The next step, you know how we counted to five when we brought the back end up? We're going to count to five as we put it down. By extending the tongue jack, that five seconds that we took out of it, we're actually gonna push the camper back up this way a little bit, thereby transferring the weight onto those very stable jacks and not so much on the very squishy tires. One, two, three, four, five. In a perfect world, when you're up here on the front, you'd have one going side to side, or one going front to back, and one of these going side to side. I don't have a cross beam running right there, so I had to kind of go at an angle underneath my A-frame to the tongue jack. This does not do the best job of eliminating that left to right sway, but it's better than nothing. Had I had six of these, I would have had one on each side uh, going up that direction, clear over there, but I only had five. So on the driver's side here is where I have two of them. So I'm going to loosen up these T-bolts and then drop the, uh, the jack down. Get that nice and stable on there. And then we'll go we'll tighten these first and we'll go to the other side. Tighten her up. That's sturdy as she gets. Now that the JT Strong Arms are deployed on the front, I want to take just a tiny bit of weight off the tongue jack. And that puts them on the front jacks. So now that we have all of the strong arms deployed and locked into place, see you 
there. And then of course back here. Now there. Over there. Now let's see how hard she rocks when I hit it from the side with just the strong arms. Strong arms are deployed. Let's give her a rock. It is worth noting I am shoving this as hard as I can. And it's not hardly moving. <sighs> and it's hot out here. That is a significant reduction in sway from the strong arms. So that is step one of what I do. And you can tell that that, that eliminates a really sizable amount of sway from this camper. But for me, once I upgraded to this 28 footer, I wanted a little bit more. So I'll show you what that one is. The strong arms by themselves work great for lateral and front to back movement, side to side, front to back movement. But as your trailer gets longer, you realize that there's two things that really contribute to that side to side shaking. And that is your slide out being out and anybody coming up and down the steps that go on your door. If you get a full grown man or even a kid, okay, if they come bounding in that door, dunk, 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 that's gonna pull that thing sideways. And the strong arms can only do so much because they are located at the ends of the travel trailer. And considering your slide out is usually right in the middle and your door is usually somewhere in the middle, that's a lot of pressure and weight uh, for those strong arms. And if you, have a, if you have a long enough trailer, they're not gonna be able to completely eliminate that. Enter the Ratchet RV Stabilizer. I picked a couple of these guys up off of Amazon. They're about 50 bucks each. Uh, so even if you go with just one or two, it's a pretty cost effective option as opposed to the strong arms, which can range between 250 and $350. And that does not include installation. If you're handy, you can install those strong arms by yourself, but you are gonna be drilling into your frame. If you have an iframe trailer that is exposed, that's pretty easy to do. You just drill right through it and put a bolt and a nut on it and you're done. If you have a box frame trailer, that means you actually have to tap into the, the frame and, and kind of thread the frame. It's a little bit more work. So 250 to 350 is your starting point for those. But if you're gonna get them all in and installed, you could be pushing upwards of 500 bucks. That's why I like these RV stabilizers. They come in a nice little bag, folded down in a very compact kit. And all they do, is they use physics to stabilize your camper. I put one of these underneath the door, off to the side just a little bit, and underneath the slide out. And the way that it works is you fold it up, the top part comes into contact with your frame, and then there's a ratchet strap on the bottom connecting these two pieces together. Once you get this top bar snugged up against your frame, you put the feet flat on the ground and you ratchet this tight so that these two legs are tight together. These things can support an immense amount of weight just simply because of the physics behind how they support your trailer. You put a couple of these underneath there and it's really gonna help. I'll show you how I put them on. So what I've done is I've situated this up underneath the frame so it's nice and snug. The feet are flat on the ground. You pull the ratchet strap tight and then you ratchet it down. If you've ever used a ratchet strap before, You'll know exactly how this works. Make sure you keep it nice and centered on there. Uh, nice and tight. And that now takes all of the weight of your slide out right here and prevents pretty much all side to side motion. On the door side of the camper, I put this as close as I can to being underneath the stairs. I can't get all the way over just because the way the stairs are situated, but that is pretty darn close. It does go without saying, I'll say it anyways, when you put these up against the frame, make sure you're not pinching a gas line or a water line, or uh, chances are you actually will burn your house down. And that's not a good thing. This is the setup on the door side. Now, with those two set up, the strong arms deployed, let's go back and see 
how much sway we have left. There's the other side. Strong arms are down, RV stabilizers are down. Let's give it a shove, see what we're doing. <clears throat> it's not an exaggeration, folks. I am hitting this as hard as I possibly can, and it is not moving. Now imagine you're laying in bed, and the kids are running around, and the dogs are running around. That thing is not moving. And now I'm shoving from the back side here. Nothing. That's it, folks. That is how you keep your RV rock solid. So that's it. I use the JT Strong Arms and two RV stabilizers to keep my rig 100% solid. Uh, wind, dogs, kids, full grown adults, none of those things will get that thing to rock anything more than just a tiny little shutter. Now I will say, and I'll be honest with you as I always pledge to be honest on this channel, the strong arms are pretty expensive. And if, that is an, if that's an option or if that's a problem for you, then I would absolutely recommend potentially doing two to three to four of the RV stabilizers. Those stabilizers run about 50 bucks a piece. I'll leave the affiliate link in my description below as well as for the strong arms but uh, you can get four of those for 200 bucks and if you did the two on the sides one underneath a front cross member and one underneath the rear cross member or maybe even the rear bumper i believe that you would probably get similar results to the full setup that i have here i can't guarantee that because that i don't have that setup but what I can tell you is that what I have works great for me. But if you want to experiment, start with two of the RV stabilizers and then maybe add a third or a fourth if that's the route you want to go. If you have any questions about installing any of these things or, or anything else, feel free to drop me a comment below. I love replying to all your guys' comments. Thank you guys very much for watching and uh, happy camping.